Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, and we're going to talk about Dave Chappelle, and what a powerful um, example he is of when a thing that resembles a thing is no longer that thing. All right, so let's talk about this. So one, I, I, you know, I really appreciate all of your patience with my channel. I understand that I can be difficult to listen to at times because I have incredibly nuanced opinions about Dungeons and Dragons, and I have opinions that absolutely no one in the world shares, right? And I definitely hear, you know, people are saying in the comments, "Hey, there's contradictions here," right? It, it is all consistent to me, but I will definitely, um, I will definitely understand that people think there are contradictions. One of the reasons why is I don't backtrack and change and tell you why an opinion I have is changing only because, uh, believe it or not, like, you know, I do a lot of content and I want to keep the content focused on what I'm discussing rather than referencing videos that are, you know, three, four, five, six back. Right. And, and I do so much content. I really, you know, so I, I just change what, you know, change my mind, change my opinion, state the new opinion and I don't go back and overlay and say this is why this is different than it was before right and so that I just wanted to give you an you know I try no I don't really try to be consistent I will change my opinion quickly and a lot of people read that as a contradiction of things I've said before I just have a new opinion right that that's that's how I'm you know that's how I understand it although I will say you know just doing, you know, close to everyday commentary on Dungeons & Dragons is just challenging. So, all right, let, let's move forward here. So, basically, um, I have this really unique view on Dungeons & Dragons. I don't think Dungeons & Dragons is a game. I don't think it's a game at all. Uh, I think it's a life path. And, and, like, let me give you an example of what I mean by this, right? So, we we take Dungeons & Dragons incredibly seriously, um, and, and I think it's a little bit dangerous to not take Dungeons & Dragons seriously, right? Here's, here's where you could end up. Let me give you an example, right? I want you to imagine that you are someone's boyfriend, okay? And, you, you know, you're, you're sitting in a room, uh, and you're playing a brand new, you know, AAA uh, video game, and you play for three hours, right? And you get up, and your girlfriend is in the other room, and she's been there longer than when you started, right? And she's still at the table, and, you know, she's got some coffee on the table, but the table is strewn with books, and with papers, right? And you go, hey, wh what are you doing? You've been here for like three hours, right? And uh, you have a whole bunch of papers with lines connecting to each other, and it looks like the scrawlings of a serial killer, right? Like, and your girlfriend is going to say, oh, I'm, I'm a DM now, and uh, basically I've been creating my own world, and in that world, um, there's matriarchal rule, but as soon as I establish matriarchal rule in my fantasy world, it made me think about how matriarchal rule would affect econ econ economics. And then I was wondering what they would use as currency. And I realized that barter would probably be part of uh, the, the economics. So I'm dealing with the economics and politics of the fantasy world that I'm building. And that's what all this is, right? And, you know, like, this is where you can land, right? Like, uh, it, can, it, can have, it can consume your life, right? It can, it can make it to the point where you think deeply about things that few other people in the world even consider, right? Becoming a dungeon master calls you to accept this long line of, um, of almost a command to study incessantly all the, all the subjects that would make a polymath, right? It's just, it's a massive, massive change, right? Uh, I was 10 years old when I I heard kids talking. I, I you know kid it was in Racine, Wisconsin, and this kid was said, "I own a castle," and I was like, "What?" Like, and he goes, "Yeah, I own a castle," and I'm like, "You don't own a castle. You live in a like, you live in a ranch house over there, right? You know, like," and, and he's like, "No, I own a castle," and I'm like, "What are you talking about, right? You know?" And it would be two years until I get my hands on the on the red box, but when I did, my life was transformed. And I have never looked back, you know. Dungeons and Dragons has bolstered my spirit. It has, you know, given me new empathy in my heart. And it has set my brain on fire to have knowledge about exploration, interaction, and combat. Right? Like, it's just, it's, it is life transforming. Right? So I don't believe that Dungeons and Dragons is a game. Right? I believe it is a life path. It is a choice. And people should tread very carefully down that life path because you will be changed, 
right? I don't think that interaction, you, you know, with Dungeons and Dragons, you, you even just a single invitation can change someone's life forever, right? It really, and we shouldn't even invite people to Dungeons and Dragons lightly. We should know this, right? And um, so it's it's a really big deal, right? So I have this incredibly unique view of Dungeons and Dragons, and I'm saying it's not what people think it is, right? I'm saying that flat out. In my humble opinion, it's not a game; it's a life path, right? So people are like, Scott, what do you, you know, they, you know, the the producers, you know, put game right on the on the product. The creator called it a, a game, right? Why don't you think it's a game? Well, um, this is incredibly difficult to see what I'm seeing, and I'm trying to get the world to see it. Right? I, I am recruiting, right? Like I'm saying, hey, you need to understand what Dungeons and Dragons is, right? And I want people on my team. I want them to see what I see, right? So I, I'm having an incredibly difficult time getting everybody else to see this, right? But I think I could t- show you an IRL example. All right. So Dave Chappelle just did his Netflix. Um, he did a comedy special, air quotes, on Netflix. And boy, oh boy. It, just go over and take a look and it, you watch Dave Chappelle's comedy special air quotes right uh, and if you think when you're done with Dave Chappelle's last comedy special if you think Dave Chappelle is doing comedy I think you're not paying attention right there's this is a perfect example of when a thing looks like a thing but it's no longer that thing right just like Dungeons and Dragons Dungeons and Dragons does look like a game if you put a thick thick set of blinders on your eyes right and if you ca- if you have small vision and you put thick blinders on your eyes you can think you can still think that Dungeons and Dragons is a game right but look look at what Dave Chappelle did okay so first of all he said this is my last comedy special on Netflix right first of all he, he literally opens it up something that's made him far you know incredibly rich right uh, a lot of people talk about 60 million dollars is what he got for like the first one like that's a lot of money you know like that and actually, it's it's not a lot of money. It's like creating a new path of success for all comedians, right? Or it was, and that was like three, four years ago, right? And so he's like, hey, you know. And so then he launches into a comedy special, air quotes, right? One thing that I thought was really incredible was, first of all, he talked about things that n- were abominably sad, right? Like just horrifically sad. And he also talked about conflicts between groups, right? He talked about uh, a conflict between himself and another group. He talked about uh, a conflict between um, where the stakes of a conflict that had occurred were so high, right, that someone who was here on this earth is no longer here on this earth, right? Like, and he was saying that he th- he thought it was connected, right? Like, maybe not a hundred percent cause, but absolutely connected, right? And the things in this air quotes, comedy special, There, were, it didn't look anything like a comedy special, right? If you were listening to him, there was, so here's the issue. Uh, Dave Chappelle was a comedian. He's now a philosopher king, right? When he speaks now, when he does a Netflix special, right, um, he is dropping philosophy about cultural impact, right? Um, about how his life has been impacted by culture and how he has impacted other cultures, right? And about humanity and identity, right? And he is talking, and there are, la- there is laughter, right? There, he, he, like, I think Dave Chappelle can make another human being laugh at will. It's an at will skill for him. He can do it whenever he wants, right? And he does it because. That's the door that people entered into listening to Dave Chappelle on, right? But if you're listening to Dave Chappelle now, he talked about subjects so dark, right, that that they should not possibly be anywhere near comedy, right? And so the reality is what he's doing now is, first of all, in the last year, if you're not aware, he had he made it so that two companies... Um, HBO Max and Netflix paid him, and it is widely thought that he got checks for, for anywhere between 10 and $100 million for the Dave Chappelle Show, which was on HBO Max and on Netflix, 
And there was no contract for those companies to pay him it. He literally just went on SNL and said, I should be getting money for these shows that are being shown on Netflix and, and, and other streamers. And I, you know, and just because I didn't get those contracts signed back in the day, I think it's unfair that I'm not getting paid now. Huge, multi, multi-international companies, you know, multi-billion dollar global companies were like, we have no contract with you. We don't owe you a single dime. Here's a check for between, like, it is suspected, 10 and and $100 million, right? Like, it's incredible. Like, this is, like, the, the amount of power that he's doing. So what you are really seeing right now is not Dave Chappelle as a comedian, but Dave Chappelle as a philosopher king who is impacting culture and acquiring power, right? And you're like, wait, Scott, you're saying that Dave Chappelle is acquiring power? yes right? He says, I'm a black man in America, right? And he also talks about wealth, right? In America, there aren't a lot of black men who are billionaires. He's on his way, right? And so what you're seeing now with Dave Chappelle is not comedy. It's cultural impact and power acquisition, right? But if you put your blinders on, right, and you want to be small visioned, you can think he's doing a comedy special exactly the same way that if you have small vision and you put your blinders on, you can think that when Gary Gygax in 1974, you know, put green magical fire on literacy, on narrative, on identity, on um, world building, the idea that Dungeons and Dragons is a game, right? Shoots and Ladders doesn't change lives. Dungeons and Dragons does. It's a life path. It's not a game. Dave Chappelle is not no longer a comedian. He's a philosopher king who's impacting culture, and um, and also acquiring power, right? And well, he should, in my opinion. All that's my opinion. Can you see what I'm pointing at? If you can, I'd love to hear it in the comments below. If you can't, I'd love to hear that in the comments below. Please consider liking and subscribing. Have a wonderful millennium.